guys, welcome or welcome back to Sissy Spaces. In today's video, we're cooking two of my family's favorite holiday recipes and deep cleaning and organizing the kitchen. We're starting with our first recipe, which is the easiest to prepare, but takes the longest to cook, and it's the chocolate covered peanuts. For this recipe, you're gonna need two pounds of white almond bark, four ounces of German chocolate, a 12 ounce bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips, 24 ounces of roasted peanuts, and a six to eight quart slow cooker and slow cooker liners. Everything you see here was purchased at Walmart. I'm not sure if they still have this slow cooker though because I purchased it over eight years ago. Also, I found this recipe online around the same time and I'll link it in my description box in case you're interested. I make this recipe about three times a year and every time it's a hit. So as you can see, all you do is add the ingredients to the slow cooker, let it cook for an hour without touching it, and then after an hour, you stir it and cook for another hour. By the way, the recipe calls for 24 ounces of peanuts. I added two of these 16 ounce containers, which equals to 32 ounce. The recipe doesn't specify the order in which you should add your ingredients, but I found it's best to add your almond bark first, since it takes the longest to melt, German chocolate bar next, semi-sweet chocolate chips and add your peanuts last. By the way, the Great Value Almond Bark is vanilla flavored and it comes in a 24 ounce block. I use one and a half blocks, which equals to 36 ounces versus the 32 ounce the recipe recommends. I store the remaining almond bark away in a Ziploc freezer bag to use around the Christmas holidays. You then wanna set your slow cooker to the low setting and set a timer for one hour after an hour, you're stirred to combine. Now the recipe says stir every 15 minutes, but I stir it after an hour because my slow cooker is old and didn't melt all the almond bark after one hour. So please excuse the shaky tripod. Max likes to play with the tripod every now and then, which causes it to shake. Next, I'm gonna put on my favorite black gloves, which are disposable gloves from Walmart. They come in a 50 count box in a size large and they cost $9.48. I wear these to clean versus the standard cleaning gloves because I found I wasn't disinfecting those standard cleaning gloves after each use. With these, I just throw them away at the end of the day. I also want to wash two loads of laundry today. I don't plan on doing any laundry tomorrow as it's Thanksgiving and I want to spend that day with family, eating, and sleeping. This is a large load, so I placed the still white vinegar in my fabric softener tray as well as the bleach tray. I'm still using a fourth of a cup of Gain Moonlight Scented Breeze Fireworks in one Gain pod. One pod and a fourth of a cup of fireworks beads is all it takes to clean, disinfect, and deodorize this large load. Also, I'm washing this load on the bulky large cycle, which utilizes extra water and soak time to ensure items are thoroughly soaked and the detergent is evenly distributed. And as always, I disinfect my laundry baskets after each use using Lysol disinfectant spray. We have our chocolate covered peanuts going as well as our first load of laundry. I now wanna get started on my family's second favorite holiday recipe and that's sweet and spicy Chex Mix. For this recipe, you'll need five tablespoons of butter, not margarine, but butter, and there's a difference, and I'll tell you later. you also need one teaspoon of baking soda, mini pretzels or sticks, praline mix, and I ordered mine from the Savannah Flavoring Company website, and I'll place a link in my description box. You'll also need pecan halves, cocktail peanuts, rice checks, corn checks, crispix, brown sugar, and Louisiana hot sauce.
This recipe is an easy one as well. It just takes a little longer to prepare. To start, you'll need five tablespoons of butter. By the way, it's important you use butter instead of margarine because butter gives it a better flavor, has less ingredients in it, and is minimally processed in margarine. You'll then wanna add a one and a half cups of packed light brown sugar, one teaspoon of baking soda, one cup of praline mix, and six tablespoons of hot sauce. You can add more of the hot sauce if you like, but stick to the amount of other ingredients mentioned or you'll end up with sticky, undercooked, or overcooked Chex Mix. When adding your baking soda, be sure you're adding a teaspoon versus a tablespoon. I made that mistake once and had to throw out the entire batch. Also, this container was once a wax candle. After burning all the wax, I cleaned it well and now use it to store my baking soda. I have several other used candles that I've cleaned and reused the jar as well. This praline mix is like gold in my house, so I use every drop. I purchase four of these each year, replenish as needed. As of today, I have about two and a half containers remaining. On the savannaflavoring.com website, they're currently selling it for $13.50 for a 25 ounce bottle. That's pretty good considering other websites are selling the exact same product, same size for $18.99. After mixing well, you wanna cook over medium high heat until boiling, and then remove and let it cool before you pour it over your Chex Mix. Now that we have the syrup started, let's do a quick cleanup and prepare the Chex Mix. As you can see, Hubby has purchased the turkeys and he's allowing them to thaw in the fridge before tomorrow. This method takes time, so he purchased the turkeys on Sunday, which gives the turkey one day to thaw for each four to five pounds of weight. In other words, if your turkey weighs 16 pounds, it takes four days to thaw. As a reminder, do not leave a package of frozen meat or poultry on the counter more than two hours. It can cause foodborne bacteria to multiply rapidly and make you sick or worse. Now that our syrup is ready, while it's cooling, prepare the Chex Mix. You'll need about two to three baking sheets or pans, not cookie sheets or pans, because baking sheets have rolled edges with a lip or groove around the entire pan, whereas cookie sheets do not, and you're gonna need that lip or groove to keep all that Chex Mix contained within it. You can also use baking sheets as cookie sheets. That's why I only purchase stainless steel baking sheets. I'm using about two large ones and a small one. And remember to coat your baking pans well with nonstick cooking spray, which helps for easy cleanup at the end. I forgot to do that once and half of my Chex Mix was stuck to the pans. This recipe calls for eight cups of Crispix, which was this entire box two cups of the rice checks, three cups of corn checks, a half a cup of salty or cocktail peanuts, but I added one cup, one cup of pecan halves, but I added two cups of pecan halves, and two cups of pretzels. You can also add one can of planter's sesame sticks, but I couldn't find any. Once you've added all your ingredients, you wanna mix them together and spread them evenly on your spray pans. Once your syrup has cooled, you want to pour or spoon it over your Chex Mix. I like pouring it down the center so I can easily coat as much, if not all, of the Chex Mix. Now this takes time. I think I spent about two minutes on each pan. If you don't coat the Chex Mix well, you'll end up with just dry Chex Mix. So do your best 
to coat as much of it as possible. This also can be messy. That's another reason why you wanna use baking pans versus cookie sheets. And as always, I clean as I go. Quick tip, spray your used items with Dawn Power Wash or Dawn Dish Detergent. This sticky residue can be a pain to clean. So after spraying it, you wanna let it soak. Also, I forgot to mention, preheat your oven to 250 degrees. As you can see, I forgot to do this before mixing the syrup in my Chex Mix. So I'm using sticky gloves to preheat the oven. It's a good thing I plan to deep clean this kitchen today, otherwise I would have had a sticky control panel greeting me on Thanksgiving Day. It's an hour later, so you need to stir the chocolate-covered peanuts. And as I mentioned earlier, my white almond bark hasn't completely melted, so I'm stirring what I can. And I'm also gonna slow cook it for another hour. Oh, by the way, the recipe says stir every 15 minutes after the first hour. I didn't do this. I waited another hour and then stirred. It's been 30 minutes since we placed our Chex Mix in the oven, so we're gonna remove it and stir it again. Then place it back in the oven for an additional 30 minutes. You wanna do this for three reasons. It gives you another opportunity to mix it well. It also gives you an opportunity to check to see if anything is sticking to your pans, and you're checking to ensure you're not burning your Chex Mix. I burnt it once, and let's just say I made two batches that day. As you can see, Max really wants some of this Chex Mix. Of course, we don't feed it to him. And he's aware the oven is hot. When he was younger, we taught him that word, so he knows not to touch the oven. This is my second time loading the dishwasher today as I loaded it earlier after breakfast. Hubby brought home some Popeyes for dinner because we discussed my filming schedule so he knew I wouldn't have time to cook. These dishes are from that dinner and unfortunately I'll have to wash for a third time today because I want to have a clean sink waiting for me in the morning just so I can load it up again. It's just the daily struggles of a homemaker but I wouldn't have it any other way. remaining items I'm going to wash by hand and if you've been with my channel for a while you know I always wash and dry Max's food bowl by hand. After cleaning his bowl I want to check on the chocolate covered peanuts and give them a stir because it's been an hour as I don't want to burn them and I'm also going to wash and dry by hand the other large items in the sink because I want to soak the baking pans we used earlier for the Chex Mix. <music> Dawn Power Wash on this sticky pot made it extremely easy to clean. Because of its great cleaning power, I only use Dawn Power Wash to clean my sinks and my ovens. And on occasion, when I'm out of my vinegar mixture, I use Dawn Power Wash to clean my shower and my sinks. This product really works, and whoever came up with the spray nozzle design is a genius. Our Chex Mix is done, so we're gonna remove them from the oven and give them another stir. You'll also wanna place the mixture in a large bowl to cool, and then after cooling, I like to place some in individual snack bags for easier access. If you 
sprayed your pan well, your Tex Mix should slide right off without any remaining. As you can see by spraying these pans, it allows for easier cleaning, but I still want to soak them in warm soapy water to remove the residue from the cooking spray. And while they're soaking, I'm going to drop my chocolate covered peanuts on parchment paper so they can harden. There's no exact science on how I'm dropping these on the parchment paper. I'm just using a tablespoon to scoop them out, but I am making sure peanuts are included in each scoop. You want to at least do that so you're having chocolate covered peanuts versus just chocolate. And if you use the slow cooker liners, cleaning your slow cooker will take no time at all. I still wipe the interior and exterior of the slow cooker, but not as much as I would have if I had not used the liner. Also, I like washing and drying the top of the slow cooker by hand because I don't want to damage the rubber seal, which keeps it airtight. I'm now cleaning up and saving the remaining cereal to eat later for breakfast. I don't plan to cook anything for breakfast this week because I plan to prepare a large Thanksgiving meal. I like taking all large boxes outside and disposing of them in the trash receptacles. By doing this, it reduces the amount of rodents in your home and reserves space in your interior trash bins. This also saves you time and money when replacing garbage bags. I just heard the jingle on our LG washer, so that means our first load is done. So I want to place them in the dryer before we finish our sweet and sour checks mix. I like placing all the checks mix in these Ziploc sandwich bags. You don't necessarily have to do this. You can keep them in a large covered bowl, but I do this for convenience. By the way, I'm using quart size Ziploc sandwich bags versus a quart size freezer bags. There is a difference. The Ziploc freezer bags are thicker than the Ziploc sandwich bags, which makes them tougher and more durable. You can use the Ziploc sandwich bags in the freezer, but it depends on what you're freezing and for how long. There's also the Ziploc snack bags, which are very similar to the Ziploc sandwich bags, but are half the size. Now that our chocolate covered peanuts and sweet and spicy Chex Mix is complete, we can start with the cleaning portion of today's video. And we're starting here with our kitchen eat-in table. This table is used all day for eating, doing homework, and I do my voiceovers here because the ceiling is lower here than any other area of the home, which provides better acoustics. Needless to say, it needs to be cleaned at least daily. I like using Pledge, which cleans, conditions the wood, and also gives it a little shine.
These pans were easy to clean because we soaked them in warm soapy water for over 15 minutes and I only need to use light scrubbing to remove the cooking spray. After this, I'm going to prep the oven by spraying the interior door and sides with Dawn Power Wash and letting it sit before wiping it away. I'm also going to heat a bowl of water in the microwave to loosen up any hardened foods, which will allow me to easily wipe it clean. Wyman's stainless steel cleaner and polish on my stainless steel appliances by applying it to a microfiber cloth instead of directly to the appliance itself. A little goes a long way as you'll see today when I clean all of my large and small stainless steel appliances. dishwasher gets a lot of water spots from the sink as we wash and load the dishes. You may not be able to see it here, but I'm wiping away tons of streaks and spots in no time with just a small amount of Wyman stainless steel cleaner and polish. Power wash has had time to work so we can now wipe it away. I wipe this bottom oven after each use so it's easy to maintain. If you don't clean your oven after each use, you may want to leave your Dawn Power Wash spray to sit overnight. Also, I only sprayed the interior door, bottom of the oven, and sides. You don't want to spray the back of this oven as it will damage the cooling fan. And if you have double ovens, use the bottom oven more frequently than the top. This will prevent your control panel from overheating and needing to be replaced, which can be very expensive. Also, after reviewing this footage, I noticed I placed the top rack back in the oven incorrectly. It has since been corrected. To wipe the top oven even though it hasn't been used in months. I want to wipe away any residue caused by heat from the bottom oven. Also, these liners are great at protecting the bottom of your oven. I'll have them linked in my description box. Boiling water in the microwave, the steam helps break down those setting stains and any stubborn food splatters that have hardened, and now I can easily wipe it away. my prep sink using the Dawn Power Wash. We use this mostly to clean produce, but it still needs to be cleaned just as often as the main sink or it'll begin to smell. This cooktop is not in bad shape, but I do want to wipe it down with a wet soapy microfiber cloth to remove any stains. Sometimes I use Clorox wipe to remove quick spills when cooking, and I'm also gonna use the same microfiber cloth used on my other stainless steel appliances to clean the stainless steel portion of this cooktop.
Now that our large appliances are clean, we're moving on to our smaller ones. I clean and empty this toaster weekly. It's easy to do, just remove the crumb trays, wipe them clean, and replace. If you don't clean your crumb trays as often as I do, you may also want to shake your toaster over the trash to remove any additional crumbs. Also, this handy cord organizer is from Amazon. I'll have it linked in my description box in case you're interested. Our chocolate covered peanuts have now hardened so we can store them away. I like placing them in this glass covered tray and sometimes I store them in Ziploc bags because they don't last long in our household. counters next. You may not see it, but there's Chex Mix syrup and chocolate on the counters, and I want to clean it off before it has time to harden and settle in the granite. I'm using the Wyman's Granite and Stone Cleaner, which will wipe those stains away easily. a little more time cleaning these counters because they are pretty dirty. Also, it's getting late in the evening, but I still need to clean the floors and fold our first load of laundry. Also, wash, dry, and fold our second load of laundry. I'm not going to stop though because I want to complete all these tasks so I can wake up to a clean, fresh kitchen. whites for a full load so I'm going to go ahead and load those in the washer and also for the sake of time I folded my first load off camera. After disinfecting the laundry basket I want to finish cleaning the kitchen countertops, vacuum and mop the floors. I had also planned to clean the dining room in preparation for tomorrow, but I might just save that until tomorrow morning. at this island when I'm doing voiceovers at the table, so there's always tons of crumbs stuck on the leather binder and left on the counters. The grain of these countertops hide the crumbs very well, but if you look at these counters at eye level, you'll be surprised at just how dirty they really are.
counters are done, we can start on the floors. I swept up most of the Chex Mix before vacuuming and before Max could eat them, but I also want to vacuum these floors using my Dyson to remove as many small crumbs left behind. And as usual, I want to sweep and vacuum by the back door as it is a high traffic area. move this table to vacuum underneath it but I wasn't able to because I didn't want to aggravate my tennis elbow so I decided to vacuum around it and show you just how dirty it really gets. These bar stools are pretty light, so I didn't have any problems moving those. Also, most visitors think I purchased the table, chairs, and bar stools as a set, but they were all purchased from different stores. For instance, the bar stools are from Amazon, the table is from Wayfair, and the chairs are from two different home goods stores. By the way, if you're new to my channel, this is a Dyson V15 Detect Vacuum with the laser detection light. I purchased a vacuum over a year ago and I absolutely love it. I was checking the Dyson website recently and they currently have it on sale $200 less than on what I paid for it. So if you're in need of a powerful suction handheld vacuum, you might want to check the Dyson website out. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy Spaces. And as always, if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.